I'm 40 years old. I live in Spanish Fork, Utah. I am now working as a CNA, and I'm going to be going to school to become a medical assistant. We don't cry. One of our favorite places um, is just going to the parks, riding scooters, riding bikes, walking. My name is Sarah. I have neurofibromatosis type 1, also known as NF1. NF1 is caused by a change in the gene, as simple as that. There's three main forms of NF. NF1 is the most common. It affects about one in 3,000 individuals around the world. The second is NF2. Its gene is on a completely different chromosome. The thing that they have in common are the Schwann cells proliferate and they cause the tumors. In NF1, they're neurofibromas. In NF2, they are schwannomas. The third form of a neurofibromatosis is schwannomatosis, which is almost exclusively tumors of schwannomas. NF1 was identified in ancient literature, so we know that this is not a new condition. The initial recognition of it is attributed to von Recklinghausen. He's a pathologist uh, practicing in Germany in the mid to late 1800s. But once the uh, gene was identified and the biochemical pathway defined, that was the new era in NF1. They inherit it from their mother. She has it, her mother has it, her grandmother had it. It actually goes back quite a few generations, so we've all just kind of passed it down through the mothers. I think initial symptoms were just I would have pain um, and noticing that my calf muscle was getting bigger and also having the cafe au lait spots. These are flat um, birthmarks. They emerge over the course of one to two years. The next sign that we see is freckling under the armpit. We call it crow's sign. And then it moves on in adolescence to the skin tumors, neurofibromas. A lot of people say they look like skin tags, but they're a little bit bigger. And those uh, tend to come up um, late childhood through adolescence, and then they continue to come up over an adult lifespan. Growing up, we didn't necessarily go to the doctors for this disorder. When my kids were young, we'd take them to a doctor, and the doctor hadn't even heard of NF1. So I was about 15 or 16 when we first got diagnosed with NF1. It's usually easily diagnosed on clinical criteria. I was diagnosed with NF1 when I was six months. What are you making? One side winter, one side summer. Winter and summer? Yes. Eighty percent of individuals with NF1 tend to be slower in their acquisition of language. Another reason is to be prepared for the potential optic pathway tumors that can cause visual loss. The other is just preparing the families, anticipatory guidance, um, just knowledge about what to expect in the, in the future is quite helpful. She has a tumor that is on the side of her face that goes into her mouth and down her throat. When she was born, we noticed on the side of her face it was a little bump, but the doctor at the time had told us it's a, a fatty deposit and that it would go away. But after about six months, it wasn't gone yet. So for the first couple years, we just monitored it with every couple months MRIs. Yeah, this is Aubrey's first MRI scan. And so this um, tumor is infiltrated through pretty much the whole right side of her face. And as she gets older, there's more and more tumor that's involving the orbit itself. 
As I was growing up, it did get worse and it was kind of painful. When it's on the face, it is difficult to deal with, especially if there's not a treatment that uh, you can look down the road and say, this is what we're gonna do for it. So she's had her share of surgeries. I believe at three is when we did her first surgery because the tumor was growing and it was making her um, eyelid droop, so she wasn't able to see as well. You can't take the whole tumor, so as it gets big, you just carve it down. After my surgeries, it is painful healing, but after I heal, it's better. She's had seven or eight surgeries to help debulk those tumors, but there's still constant issues with that. It does make more things challenging because on um, one of my parts of my bone is thin as paper, so it can break really easy. The prognosis is extremely variable for NF1, and it depends on which manifestation arises. There are some individuals that don't have the more serious consequences. Well, I have a lot of the minor symptoms. I do feel really nauseous in the mornings, and then I also tend to get back pain a lot. They did check me for tumors, but thankfully I don't have any. Rebecca, who is 17, about two years ago had a large tumor removed from her back. It was about the size of a football that we removed. Since then, she is feeling a lot better and we haven't noticed any more growth from that on her back. There's another form of neurofibroma called plexiform neurofibroma, and they can be nodular or they can be diffuse and spread out. Anywhere there's a nerve, you can have these neurofibromas. And part of our management, our surveillance for NF as we go through later childhood through adulthood is always wondering if somebody has a plexiform neurofibroma, is that going to transform into a malignancy? Doctors do say that you're four times more likely to get cancer if you have NF. My son, Christian, I guess drew the short straw because he had a tumor in his arm and it turned to cancer. He fought cancer for about eight years. He passed away when he was 29. My youngest daughter, Jennifer, uh, a few years ago, she wound up with uh, thyroid cancer. As I got older, I ended up getting a lot more of the outer neurofibromas, little bumps everywhere. I had a tumor on my right calf that got really big, so we had some of that removed um, a couple of times throughout my teenage years. They do continue to grow even after being debulked. So it's not just the transformation to malignancy that we worry about, it's also the progression and is it impinging on other tissue. It's hard to see your, your children and now your grandchildren go through the medical issues of NF1 and also the emotional issues of NF1. I think mentally and emotionally, it can be hard at times. I feel very self-conscious a lot of the times because I'm just constantly worried about the judgment of how I look. Let's talk about Aubrey. Instead of hiding and instead of being upset when people stare, she wants them to talk to her and she tells them about it. I remember one time at a softball game, some kids walked by and were staring at her and I kind of moved forward and I want to talk to them and she held me back and says, that's okay, Papa, I got it. I want people to know like what I go through and stuff. And when people stare at me, I don't really like that, and I just want them to come up to me and just ask me questions. The other component of NF1 that I've recognized over the years is the, the learning disabilities. They run the gamut. Executive function is one difficulty. There's some hyperactivity, attention deficit, inability to focus. Rebecca, she was just diagnosed with the ADHD. We also believe that Aubrey possibly has that. She hasn't been tested yet, but she does have a lot of the symptoms of that. I'm in close time, so he asked if I would step in for a while and help cook, so he taught me how to cook Chinese. Growing up, it wasn't very well known, so now going on this journey with Aubrey, we've been in, able to get in touch with other parents 
with kids who have NF. There is this thing on Facebook, and my mom shows me pictures of other kids with NF, and it makes me happy that I know that I'm not the only one. So some families who are dealing with NF1, they're not real keen on sharing that with, with others. But I would say the majority seem to get some benefit out of connecting with either other families, other support groups, and recognize that other individuals are dealing with the same issue. And nowadays, with social media, they form some very extensive relationships within the NF community. I very seldom spill on people. There is a NF research community that is worldwide now. The focus on tumors is huge. Even if we can't cure this condition, we can come up with some daggone good treatments. Isn't that cool? You can go slow, you can go fast. I think it's important that more people know what this disorder is, that they can understand how common it is and how many different aspects there are to it and just help people learn and understand. If you have an F1, it's fine to be nervous because it is kind of scary, but you are going to go through it and it's going to be fine. Just know that this doesn't define you and you are still who you are. I am so proud of, of all of them uh, because they just, they seem to be able to have this spirit of positive attitude and just, you know, a love of life.